okay if you don't have that that's fine uh, so i started the recording and i'm trying to do screen share let me know once you're able to see it can you see the screen share yes sir. yes okay now uh, so we are we started um, a website and this website can guide you on specific details that i share normally and what are the trainings that we do and how uh, good can we take up it to the next level so that's what the main idea is so just go to bajrang.org and you will be able to see all the details over here and in this uh, right now there are two challenges these are this is pretty basic but data scraping is something that you can look out if you are uh, very new so my interest or my activity for next 20 minutes or 30 minutes is to understand what is the use case over here and store it into some particular location that was that is my main agenda or my idea so for that we'll be using uipath storage buckets and i will also tell you why we are going with storage buckets so cloud.uipath.com also start with uipath studio Getting Microsoft account. Okay. So by default, again, this is not like a training session. So I request each and everyone to respond back. So by default, what do you mean by storage? Any any questions or any anything that you know, just go ahead and type in over the chat. Let's just see. What is a storage in in definition? What can be a storage? Database. Okay. Storing some information, not data. Okay, sure. Folders. Okay. So data files can distribute Okay, so we'll start our process and let's keep it storage buckets. OK, so the answers like database, uh, storage folders, source, uh, store data files, everything is fine. Uh, but the simple explanation that we can think of is to save some information in any particular location. It can be a place or it can be your home where you uh, where you store your items in the same way in our. In our memories or memory allocations will store some information at one particular place and earlier we used to do this on at different third party items for example if you are taking uipath as the application microsoft can be a third party tool for uipath or any kind of uh, azure can be a third party tool and amazon can be a third party tool but now right now uipath is providing its own storage service and this we can use okay so let's just see so here we will have multiple storage options available orchestrator which is uipath and azure storage amazon 3 storage i mean io storage and s3 compatible storage solutions and file system so these are the storage providers that are provided by uipath right now we will have orchestrator by default and you will be able to use it right away but if you want to use any kind of third party service, you need to enable it. Let's just see and open it. It is connected, so I'll just go with this one. 
and on the right side in the resources you will be able to see these are data services which is different from storage buckets data services are like database um, entities where you can store tabular data but storage buckets is used to store file information like any kind of you can upload files you can download files you can read the file read text file you can read the uh, update the text file so these these kind of activities that you can do in this particular options or with these particular options okay like any kind of storage solution what exactly do we need to require we need to create something we need to edit if we want we need to read it view it and delete it so all these options are enabled by default and you will be able to do those activities okay so this is my default tenant and in this default tenant i will just go ahead and see and to use storage bucket you should be connected to the same orchestrator folder here i have an orchestrator folder right i will just move it to shared so i need to use my shared folder and uh, storage buckets are not across uh, like it's not a data service where it can be accessible across all the tenants well this is like a per folder solution for example this is my shared folder and in this shared folder we have separate storage buckets okay so in the same way if you have a different uh, if i have a different modern folder i can have different storage bucket for it so this is the difference between multiple storage buckets or this is the difference between data service and storage data service if you see can be accessible or data service is available but this data service we can be accessible by multiple tenants but this storage bucket can be accessible only within this particular storage or uh, shared folder within this particular folder let me just see how many are added okay seems to be good now which so i'll be using this particular uh, file or i'll try to use my bajrang.org training challenges data scraping if you don't know how to navigate to this just go to bajrang.org and in the trainings you will be able to see challenges click on data scraping this is where you will see this i cannot use my edge or anything so i'll be going with my internet explorer from my laptop Let's just hope this works. Okay. The cross is enabled for this. Okay, fine. Even if um, there is zero cross enabled for this one, that's the reason I'm not able to see in the Internet Explorer. But if you just see, we have some information. Let's assume that this is the information that we require, and we need to add this information into my storage bucket. This is my storage bucket. And in this storage bucket, let's create a new storage bucket. So you have three options, Orchestrator, Azure, and Amazon. If you give Azure or Amazon, you need to provide license keys. But if you are using orchestrator, you can directly go with just by giving the name. So storage bucket details. Okay, this is my storage bucket name. And if you see, I can set it to read only access so that whatever is trying to read can only fetch the information. You can have some information like you can have config details, which obviously sometimes change. And you can place it over here and you can upload it manually and you can get the information from this or you can upload some pdfs here and you can get the information from the pdf you can download the information from the pdf 
you can do anything of such sort, but the main item or thing that you need to understand is this accepts only files. So let's go with your part. I'll go ahead and I will use my activities. So to use storage buckets, we need to see if storage buckets are first enabled or just type in storage buckets. By default, they are available in the activities panel. So if you see here, we have delete storage file, download storage file, list storage files, read, upload and write. Let's see them one by one. Open workflow. So here, if you have any questions, uh, please go ahead and uh, ping it over chat. And members, if you know the answer, just go ahead and type in the answer. If you don't know the answer, uh, please wait. We will just try to get it details. Let's see. Okay. So I'm just adding a sequence over here. Please enable or accept new team members if they are coming in. Assign. So I'll be just using a browser, open browser or use browser applications pro. In this, so I'm using all modern activities. You don't go for, go don't go with your new projects in your legacy items because. Sorry, this is not the one. Indicate. Let's just indicate it again. Indicate target on screen. Yeah. So this is my application score. Okay. So this is the browser URL, and I'm trying to get information for it. Get text. So why am I not asking you to go uh, with legacy items or legacy activities? Please. Uh, in next one or two years, or at least in next six months, UiPath re will release uh, a notification stating that legacy application, legacy items, or legacy activities will not work. So if you build something on legacy, then you may you will you should always need to transfer them or upgrade them to the modern activities. Instead of them, instead of that, if you can directly go with modern activities, that will be easier for you. So this is what I have. I can just copy all the details, or I can just take it up here. I'll just see. So this is all my targets and strict selector. Let's use a strict selector. And let's just. Go with open UI Explorer. If that's not possible, I can also use this advanced data scraping as my target and I can fetch the values. Just see. Okay. So I'm trying to get any text that is having hello in the beginning. Right now this should have only one because I added it only once. So let's just add a star to it. Validate data. It's validated. And then let's see. So right now it is having only one target element. And if you click on this. Show matches, it will show you how many items are matched. Confirm. OK. Let's just to just try to write it. We'll not do anything else. We'll just write it. Okay. So this data that saved is greetings, str greeting. And once it is stored in a variable, the next activity I'm trying to do is just try to log a message. And in this log message, I'll try to post it so that we can see log message. Str greetings. So if you are using modern activities again, the best thing that you need to do while we are debugging or while we are creating the code is turn off. Automatic on and automatic off. So this gives you an option. Close never and open never because I already have my. Window open or browser open. I should not open or close it until I complete my activity. So let's just debug it. It will just attach browser. So instead of using open browser and attaching a browser, this use browser activity will do both. So there is a specific uh, video that I'm 
post, I will be posting on what is the difference between classic activities and how they are merged to modern activities. Just wait for that. So this is what we have. Hello, I need to this data, whatever we have, we need to store it in our storage bucket. Let's just try to write a storage text file. Okay, so I will tell you how to directly write to a storage text file or you can also create a file in your local machine and upload it. You can also download the storage file and you can also delete the storage file. The part that I would like to give is data.txt and the storage bucket name is, this is the storage bucket name that we are trying to work on. So storage bucket details is the storage name. Storage buckets. OK, and the text, whatever the value that we need to add in. So let's just save it and let's run it. And I'm saying clearly this folder must be mapped to for this to work. If the folder is not mapped properly, then it will throw error. Let's just wait. And it will try to upload. Edit. Sorry. Let's just see the details. So we have data updated. Now just let's just download it and see what data is updated. OK, now if you see here, all the data that's available in the website, I got it updated. Now if some other process is also trying to access the same storage file, instead of having a shared folder in your local machine and trying to access it where they may have issues. They can directly access the details from here. They will not have any deadlocks or they will not have any redundancy. So that can be one of the use with the storage bucket. Okay. Now here, since we have written something, let's try to rewrite. Then let's see what data will it give me. So instead of using just one activity or one item, I'll just edit the target and I will scrape all the information from here and I will try to get it. So I'm trying to delete this target. So it will just take me this complete value. OK, and this is my parent ID and this is my due. Let's just go with strict selector. OK, confirm. Bajrang, one yeah. second. Yeah, tell me. Uh, why only strict selector? Why not physics selector? Can, can uh, you differentiate them? Uh, OK, see, for this selector, can be used when there is uh, a change in the information. For example, okay. uh, let me just explain that in the end, but please uh, okay, remind, okay. remind me. But here, if you just go and see with uppercase is one of the uh, use case that I normally give to students or basics. So if I type in something and hit on enter, so this is having some particular text, right? And if you are using strict selector with text as an input, if you don't have this text, then it will not be able to select this particular selector. But if you use fuzzy selector and there can be a range that you can give match only 50% of the target, match only 40% of the target. So if it is able to match 50 or 40 percent, then it will still be able to process. Okay. okay. So, but we can go in detail later. So the main agenda, let's complete it first. Okay. Yeah, so here we have the value and here we have the greetings option. So I'm just trying to rewrite this particular item. So let's just see. It picked up the values. And it's stored. Now let's just understand or see what value did it update? Did it rewrite or did it recreate? So let's just see that. Data. So in this data, I can just try to download. So this is my text file. So if you see here, the data is overwritten. So if you try to rewrite on some information, 
you try to rewrite the data. Okay, let's just also see if there is any way to append the information. Uh, read upload storage data, read, write, write, write. No, so there is no way to append the information. You can just write it. But if you want to append the information, any idea on how can you do that? You just want to append the information. How can you do that? OK. Let's just see in the chat. Give me some idea. It might be right or wrong, but give some idea. First, read the data in that text file mm -hmm. and then up upload mm -hmm. whatever you wanted to add to that string mm -hmm. and then again pass the string to that right. Yeah, whatever you have done. That will work. So we'll just read whatever information that we have. Read text file. Read storage. Text. And in the storage text, let's just give the path data.txt. Without reading the data from the string or from the text file, uh -huh. can we read the text from that uh, text file, whatever we have in the storage bucket? Without reading what? Like you are saying, read text file, right? Read text so file read... from the storage bucket. It's not local file. It's a storage bucket text file. Yeah. See, just now you created this data dot txt, right? Yes, correct. So, if I need to read the data from this text mm -hmm. file, is that possible? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Now I'm just reading the text file from the storage bucket directly. Right. Okay. Okay. So this will be stored in some existing data let's just uh, rename this particular item result is str existing data and using this existing data i'll just try to append the information so assign in this assign statement let's just go ahead and give so this is my dt right uh, dt greetings str sorry this is my text file str greetings so in this exterior greetings, I will just append the value like uh, existing data, str existing data. Plus, uh, I can just give it out something like this. str existing data and then plus vb new line. This vb new line will create a new line and then I will add plus a a separator just to have that understanding plus str greetings so this greetings data will be updated and we'll be able to see the value okay so i'm not sure so, i'm not reading the data in local file i'm reading the data from the storage bucket directly but there is a catch over here i'll tell you what So it's just trying to read the information. Step into. Now, if I complete reading the information, I can just go into my local panel and I can see that existing data is having some information and these are all the values. OK, now this data greetings data is read by website. Now let's just go ahead and use step into. Now when we have this updated local panel, let's just see. So this is my existing data and this is my creating data. If you can see here, a new line is appended and this is my previous information. And these are my, this is my new information or something that I got from the website directly. Now let's just go ahead and write it, continue. So in ideal scenario, as we have discussed earlier, this will just overwrite the existing information. Let's just see it. OK, the data is overwritten and we have the complete information. There is a catch that I have said. What is that? Now, this is OK for text file, but what about PDF? What about uh, Excel files? Will we be able to do it? Let's just see it over a different sequence. Sequence. Upload Excel files. 
Okay. In the same project, I will just go into folder and I will just create a data folder. And in this data folder, I will just go ahead and create a new Excel file. Storage Excel. Okay. Now this is storage e that I want to upload. And let's just see that. So till now we have say we have seen read storage and write storage. Now let's just see upload storage file. So destination will still be same. We can just give the path. So you can just give slash to mention where is the particular file path. <coughs> So if you see here, this is my file resource, but if you observe file resource is a library or this is of a type file type that you need not give. You can just give the. Bucket name and this is my bucket name, so I'll just copy it from the bucket here. Storage details. Okay, and after that's done, let's go ahead and give a path for it. In argument, where do we have this file path? So that we have inside data slash low storage. Let's just copy it. Copy as path. Just give a relative path, not absolute path. So relative path will be only from the parent folder. Absolute path will be from the C drive or drive location. So let's just try to upload it. Okay, it is able to upload, but the problem is it did not have the file name. So let's also give the file name here. Let's just try to give completely whatever we have. Storage data storage. I'll just try to upload. So this is a blob file path. So data is stored in blob storage. UA path has a blob storage in that it's trying to save. But since we are not able to give the file name, we did not give the file name, it did not store properly. So if you see here, you can also give folder path. For example, I have a specific project name. In that project name, I want to give separation in the same folder. Even I can do that. So just use it to get the file information. So let's just see what is the difference between reading and adding data to this storage file. We'll be able to download and we'll be able to do all the activity. OK, so this is my storage file and I got it downloaded since I didn't add anything. That's fine. So if you see this is accepting the path, the file name should be given. In this particular path, so if you give it properly, then it will come and. Was wrong, is there any need of this destination property? Like which will one? it be useful? Which one? This file path, whatever you gave now, which is data slash storage. Yeah. Okay, see, instead of data slash storage, uh, you can have it as project one, project two, project three. And each project you have separate data folder, data two folder, data three folder. And if you want to maintain a folder structure inside storage bucket, you can still maintain that using this path. But in storage bucket, you are seeing just a record there, right? With data slash storage. Exactly. It's not a separate folder there, right? Exactly. Now, but when you read the Excel file, the read file, Read storage file. So list storage files. Let's just uh, first. Yeah, just let's just read storage text or. So let's just try to read storage text. We'll see there are two options, two things that I would like to cover over here. Uh, can you go on mute function? Yeah, let's just give the file name. If I just give the file name, let's just see what will happen. <coughs> Okay, this is still my storage bucket. And let's just try to see the value. And here 
the folder path is shared that is taken by default from this particular item or you can just give out shared okay. and the result whatever we are trying to get it let's just give it excel information sta so this is always a string if you observe this is always a string that is the problem with reading um, other type of files like excel pdf or any other files image with this particular activity so you can just go ahead and try to read it str let's just give it as control k str and then excel information and then just try to log it log and by the way i haven't given the correct path the path should be data slash storage but let's just see if this will work or not Uh, whether the Excel must be present locally within the project or can we upload shared folders for a shared folder? It can be on a shared folder. It's, it, it just need a path. So, Vamshi, if you can see, the storage is not allowing you, like you should have a proper specific path from where it should access the file. Okay. So, if we are yeah. not giving it, then it will not be, we will not be able to access the information. Like, for example, if I have this information it is available in data folder but if i go ahead and search in the particular file in the main folder i will not be able to access it right? so in the same way we should be able to specify it correctly the answer your question yeah thanks so i'm just giving the path correctly now and i will just paste it So we'll continue for 10 more minutes by the time this will be completed and uh, be ready with your questions if you have any. So if you see here, the content is at a blob level or blob storage path, like a blob storage file. Um, so if you want to read Excel files or if you want to read PDF files, only option that you have is download them. Download them to a specific temp folder. Path. That is storage bucket name. I will give them storage bucket details. So did you understand why we will not be able to read other files other than text file or not? Yes or no? Yes, so here we need to give the file name and location. So let's just give the same file name and location here. Um, so this is going into data, but here let's just change this to, I think the folder will not be created by default. So let's just give a iPhone and, and let's just see if this gets downloaded. So once you have the file downloaded, then obviously you can use, if you see as a developer, you should know what you're downloading. As a developer, you should know what you're uploading. So you will be able to read, read Excel file, read range. So these kind of activities you can still be able to perform. The file will be downloaded to your local machine. Let's just go ahead and see this one. Uh, Vajrang, I think I think you already clarified this question, but I just want to re-verify this. Uh -huh. Can you go to the download activity one more time, please? Okay. And you have this path, right? Data slash storage. Correct. So what you're trying to say is, when I'm trying to use this download activity, I should have this storage.xlsx file mm -hmm. in the data folder. Without uh, this file okay. being present there, it's not down. This data folder is the storage bucket data folder. This is the path that I'm giving. This is the path. So if this particular name should exactly match with that exactly. activity. Exactly. But the even if match. the file is not present in the data folder, that, no, that does not matter. If it is not available, then it will throw it there. Okay, so that means whatever path you are seeing in the storage bucket in orchestrator, yes. that particular file should be available in that folder in your machine wherever you are running. Correct. Then only it will download. No, 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 
not in my local mission. This should be present in the orchestra. Yeah, at this location. So, for yeah, example, in your yes. in your project, wherever you have this data inside the data folder, you so, have the storage file. Let's Can you just, just uh, delete it? Let's just see something like this. So I have uploaded it with the data folder, right? I will just try to control D this one. So instead of data folder, I need not place it as data. The destination can be output or project one. Project one slash data slash storage dot x. So now for project one, I am having a separate data folder. In that data folder, I am like on that path, I'm just trying to upload this. Okay. Let's just see that. Yeah. Now, if you see here, I'm not mentioning the exact local path. Okay. So this is the path that we mentioned it over here for the blob storage or for the orchestrator. So whatever data you have in the orchestrator that you need to have to read it back. Okay. So now if you see here, I'm using this particular path. So I can use this particular path. OK, so this data folder is not dependent on our local question. Yeah, clear. Okay. Let's just try to. Check with this one and. It, let's just see if the file is getting downloaded and moreover, the file is already downloaded in the previous attempt. So this is my storage. So I just try to delete this particular item. And I will go back and debug. So now when I download the storage bucket or the file from the storage bucket is available in my local machine, I can perform Excel operations. I can perform manual operations. I can do anything I want. Okay. And the last thing is list of storage files. So I'll just try to show this particular activity and we'll close it for today. Project. Let's just add one more sequence. List files. Okay. And let's just see the list of storage files. Directory we need to give which directory do we need to send in the information and this storage bucket name. So let's just see this one. Now earlier Vamshi you asked right the directory. So the slash whatever the values that this is showing here. These are directories. This is one directory inside yeah. that there is subdirectory and we are having these values. So if I just give slash or empty, this will try to give me some empty value. Let's just see that. Full recursive uh, will give me all the values and filter. If I want to get only XLSX dot XLSX, I can get that. So directory, uh, which directory do we need to have? Let's just see this. K result control K. So what is the result type? So I'll always go by the type of it to see the values. I enumerable of storage file info. Control K. I enumerable storage file info. OK. And the directory can be empty. Let's just see if this will work. If this will not work, then I need to give the data folder. And then I will use for each. OK, in this for each, this should be the type should be. OK, how to mention this particular type? Now, if I go here, this is of type a collection of UI path core activities storage file info. So this activity should be mapped to. Storage file info. Storage file info. So I will get one file at a time. OK, so this I'm giving it as I enumerable of storage file info. And for this one item, I'll just try to download the files. I'll just try to download them. I'm not doing anything else. Oh. Download storage file. So the path can be where where is the exact path item dot let's just see if we can get a path from here get full path okay so storage container fold 
container name, storage folder path, file full path. So this is my file full path and storage bucket name, download the storage bucket name. This should be my storage bucket details. Okay, let's just give it. So, and then file and information where that should be saved to. So let's just give it back to some folder or file name or location. Let's just give it as output. Yeah, I'm just trying to give the output. Okay, and then I'll just first create a folder here to avoid any kind of errors. Can't it automatically create this folder? I, we haven't, need to... I haven't tried it out. <laughs> let's just try. If we are ready for the errors, that's fine. Yeah, let's find let's do that and also can you put a debug point at download storage file and show me what is there in item item will be storage file info let's just wait let it complete okay if since we are getting this okay okay see this is not allowing me to do this let's just go ahead and just give out slash so slash will give me the path or home path I'll also keep a breakpoint over here. Okay, sorry. Um, breakpoint over here, breakpoint over here. Step into. Yep, this went through. So let's see in the locals, what do we have? In the locals, we have a list of four files. Okay, and the list of four files will have the full file path. So this is the property for each item. For file full path, storage container folder, null storage container name what is the storage container name file info so again this is one file info this is stored again this is a uh, json or you can say it as dictionary with some specific information that's it this is the type data type that's created by ui path again so let's just see file info okay i'll just see if the file gets downloaded or not I really want to where it saved the file properties. I think folder uh, output was not a folder. It was a file, I guess. <laughs> OK, if you are correct, then yeah, it's creating it as a file without any. Uh, without any extension, so it's kind of creating like a binary file, so you need to give the specific path. It's not creating a folder on its own. But let's also see this, but let's just also see this since we have given only output as the item. Let's just give slash and then let's give uh, this one. Item dot file name. Let's just try this one also. Item dot. File name. Item dot full file path. Storage container folder. OK, file full path I will try to give, but here I will just try to change this one. Close, yeah. So instead of this one, I'll just try to give something like this path dot get file name and then I'll give the path. So this will give me the complete path. Okay, save it. Is anyone joining in? Please, please hello any new members if they are available, if they are coming in. Um, debug file. Let's just see that. We tried with one activity that's not working, but let's just at least with this activity, they should work. Continue. And continue. So yeah. So what is the error that it's throwing output? Okay. So storage buckets output folder storage name. Uh, execution could not find a part of the path, so it's not able to create. Let me just give out these particular folders and then let's just try again folder output. I really think that all the files will be downloaded into one specific folder, not at a folder separation. Because we are giving just the file name 
it's not the complete path and we are not creating the folder structure with the code. Continue. Continue. So the file gets downloaded. Continue. There is a file with no name. I, I, I'm just checking how that file will download. Yeah, that's file. That file is throwing an error. So in the output, let's just see. Uh, path name cannot be null because this particular item which is stored empty value. So this is not allowing me to continue further. I'm not able to download it even. I will leave it for now. I will later down delete this particular block, but you should always create it with file names. OK, so here I will just try to change this one. Uh, Control T, I'll just add it to try catch block. In this try catch block, if there is any catch that happens, then I will just go ahead and add activities. Where is my log? Log. Add a log message. Exception dot message. Maybe another validation you can put in the try where if the file path is blank, then oh. do continue. That's fine, but for now, uh, let's just continue because we also need to complete the delete activity, right? But whatever you said, you have said is correct. Exception dot uh, two string. So it will throw error with an exception. Maybe based on this exception, we will be able to find out. But I really don't think that the file name is empty over there. That particular item. So just see the properties. Continue. This will throw error. Continue. Continue. Okay. It downloaded everything. Let's just see the output. Refresh. So I think let's just see why it did not download the other file. We have two items. Okay. Data.txt. Okay. To our surprise, what I did understand is it's it's taking the files only at a root level. It's not taking the files uh, inside this project. Let's just try to give this project name as well and just see what happens. Because these are not the files, right? This is a directory. In the project, you have a directory, but in the data folder, you have directly a file path. Maybe that's my assumption. But anyhow, let's just go ahead and give it out a try. So instead of just path, I'll just give the directory name. Project one and then let's just debug. See. Throwing an error or what? OK. Continue. OK, let's just see how many activities or how many files did it pull up. Then we will check. So if you see here in this particular project folder, we have only one file. That's what it have picked. So this works like uh, directory.get files. And if you uncheck, uh, remove all these subfolders and get me only the path that are at the top level. So this is doing something like that. So basic all the file activities which you are doing in local machine, you will be able to do that, but in a different manner. Where is my file? Why is it not downloading this particular activity? Properties, I think uh, the second folder, this will also throw error. The main reason being, what is this one? It downloaded the file path properties. Storage bucket output path dot file name. And let's just try to run it again and let's see if the path is available or not. And result, what is the I local resource result? Control K. Uh, I local resource result. And just try to log message. What is the message that is available here? So let's just give I local. So this is a value that we can check. 
I look the last modified last data. So this is again the details about that particular item. Is resolved. Get full name. Get extension. Okay. Let's just give the complete full name. Then just see if it is available or not. Debug. If it is not done, let's just find out the result or let's just find out in the another meeting. For now, let's just close. But let's just see in the output folder if we have anything. Data storage bucket, output files. Yeah, this is throwing another step into. This actually succeeded without any errors. So the path is project data one storage. The destination, okay, it is taking destination as E. I think that is correct. So here, okay, so my bad, sorry. I am checking with uh, the values that are incorrect. So it's always storing it E. If that is correct, irrespective of the file path, so here, it's actually saving it with the same file name. Now let's just try to do some one simple other activity so that we'll be able to get the correct values. Let's just use slash and I will check all the values. And in this all values, let's just give this one path. And in this path, I'll just take out now dot to string. To string of dd mm y y y y. Oh, sorry. DD MM Y Y Y Y H H M M S S. So this is the file name that I'm trying to give along with the path so that I can see all the values. So if I am not wrong, then this should be overwriting the existing file. So now it should create two files. Let's just see. It is picking up all the items recursively and it's writing the same file twice. That that is the reason. Let's just remove the breakpoint, continue. Okay. So yeah. This downloaded two times and this is the value. And let's see this particular item. Download is not possible. And the reason is exception log message. What is the log output? OK, so this is my exception. Value cannot be null. Uh, parameter path cannot be null. Since the parameter path is null, this is trying an error. Okay. So that's it for today. One hour of uh, very fast explanation on storage buckets. Were you able to understand or were you not able to understand? Give your updates. Stopping the screen share. Yeah. Uh, hi, hi, Vajran. Yeah, Shandu, tell me. Yeah, yeah, I joined in the middle of this. So, is mm. this is a modern activity? No. Storage no. bucket. No, this is not modern or classic activity. This is uh, available from 2019, I guess, 19 or 20. So, uh, design, oh. uh, you. UI design doesn't have any change with modern activity. This okay, is like so. Uh, one more doubt. One more doubt. Watching. Is there uh, any file size limitation for mm -hmm. uploading files in uh, storage buckets? Uh, that should be obviously linked to your uh, website or uh, in the orchestrator settings. Like uh, normally, when you upload the file package, also there is a limit of uh, uh, 30 MB is the file limit that we can set obviously so this is also configurable but you need to check with the settings in the okay. if you are checking in the cloud documentation you will be able to get it thank you yep so i'm just trying i'm giving out uh, the url for the website and i'm just trying to if you are new to your path or if you want to practice this is giving some Competition or uh, this is this particular use case will help you in. Where is my screen share? Yeah. So this use case will help you in uh, working with multiple activities like uh, read range. Uh, sorry, read text file or find uh, find children and you need to get all the values. You need to 
divide the values using separator. You need to create a data table and you need to write or filter out all the true items, completed items to true, and you, you need to write it to Excel. So that was this use case, and uh, you can just go ahead and give it a try. Um, this will cover around five to eight activities in total. This will be a good use case, and it has around 200 or 100 values or 200 values, 200 values. You can also yes, try sir. to work with links, link queries. That will also work. OK, so how's the meeting? I'm planning to do this on regular intervals around 15 days once, but I need to have a proper uh, feedback. Will this be useful or not? And this is absolutely free. There is no charge. Uh, this is again for the community. Uh, so anyone outside the organization can also join, not only people from inside the organization. But this is only for ordinance or uh, org people. It's very informative. Thank you. Yeah, Chenu, you're saying it's very, yeah, it's very useful. But then now I don't know these storage buckets uh, concept. OK. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, just give it out a screenshot and uh, tag me in LinkedIn. Uh, I'll, I'll be happy to see your posts uh, because uh, some kind of uh, information must be shared with all the members so that uh, next time someone else control shift, uh, others will be able to join and they will be able to get the guidance. Can we do that? Just take a screenshot. Nothing else. Don't keep your faces. Don't keep your faces. Nothing. Just take a screenshot. So any feedback for this session specifically like too fast, too slow. See, we need to complete the complete uh, concept within one hour. That's the time the limit that I have placed. But is it useful? Will, is it sufficient with the speed? Yes, uh, it was useful. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, uh, so. That's it. Meeting is done. If you have any questions, I will be available for next five minutes. Take them. By the way, how many of you are from Vajrang organization? Chenzi, you're also from the organization, right? You're already onboarded. Yes, Vajrang. Yes, Vajrang. From... You're from which team? Uh, uh, exactly. I don't know the batch uh, name. Uh -huh. I think in. Uh... March, uh, February. <laughs> it's long, buddy. But, uh, good to see you. Yes. Back. Yes. Yes. I know Shavya is new. Nagraj, you want to talk? Nagraj, Shavya, and Kasim, you had your hand raises. If you want to talk, you can talk. No, no, I was just telling that I'm part of your organization. Also. <laughs> Thank you so much. Welcome to the You joined in new, right? Yeah. September batch. Cool. So. All, all these are additional benefits for joining. In. All the best. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you. Yes, tell me, tell me. Uh, uh, regarding storage buckets uh, in interview, what kind of question will raise up by the interviewer regarding storage bucket topic? Uh, right now, people are not using storage buckets uh, on on an enterprise level completely, though this started back. Uh, but you can just uh, ask, like the questions that I have said. Why will you use storage buckets? Uh, how will you give the path for it? Can you give folders? So directly we cannot show folders in storage buckets, but we'll be able to give a path for it and we'll be able to access it, right? So okay. like this, you will be able to check. Just give it out and uh, try. Okay. Okay, fine, fine. Thank you. Yeah.
thank you so much everyone have a great day have a great uh, yeah. weekend bye 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 thank you thank you, thank you.